What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 2 of Shit Weasel of the Week. Now as you will remember, the first ever winner of Shit Weasel of the Week award was none other than the verified soy boy, Sadiq Khan. The incompetent London Mayor who called the US President Donald Trump and his supporters 1930s fascists before also lumping the Brexit party and all Brexiteers in the same label, causing Donald Trump to perform the first aerial assault on a London Mayor since World War II shitting on the hapless mayor from the skies above with some truth bombs. Now, Trump's aerial bombardment of the snivelling shit weasel, Sadiq Khan, labelled the incompetent mayor a stone-cold loser for his inability to tackle the crime epidemic that has grown under his watch. All of that combined with Sadiq Khan going on national TV claiming Trump attacked him while trying to play down the fact that he had called Trump a fascist the day before Trump even arrived, made Sadiq Khan the clear winner, in my opinion. Now, as all of you over the weekend who nominated already know, the nominees are now decided by you, the viewers. So, let's take a look at the nominees for this week, chosen by you guys. The first nominee, which I'm sure will surprise no one, is the current shit weasel of the week, Sadiq Khan. This incompetent fuckpig has been called out for doubling his culture budget while he complains to the government he needs more money for the police. He is willing to spend 24 million a year on unnecessary award ceremonies and festivals, but not willing to tackle the knife crime epidemic or the massive rise in crime since he has been the mayor. He finished the week calling Trump the poster boy of racists because Trump stated London needs a new mayor because of the disaster that is Sadiq Khan will only get worse. Remarkable that you've got the president of the USA amplifying the tweets of a far-right activist, amplifying basically a racist tweet. And that's one of my concerns about uh, Donald Trump. He's now seen as a poster boy for racists around the world. Well, it's for Donald Trump to answer the question why he's obsessed with me. This is Donald Trump to answer the question why he amplifies the tweets of far-right activists, why he amplifies racist uh, tweets. I'm quite clear there are many cities across our country facing uh, a huge issue of the increase in violent crime. They've been doing so since 2014. There are many good leaders in America facing massive increases in violent crime. You know, they have my support to make sure we learn lessons from each other and we work together to grapple with the issue of violent crime taking place in many, many cities across the Western world. So, moving on, we have our next nominee for Shit Weasel of the Week, Rory the Soy Boy Stewart, the Tory leadership contender who thinks it's a good idea to push Theresa the EU appeasers failed surrender document through Parliament, and when that fails, plans to hold a People's Assembly, which is his word in for a small referendum, in the hope that it ignores the 2016 vote to leave, as this snivelling toad voted Remain and is loved by the leftists within the Lib Dem and Green Party Soy Boy camps, for his soft approach on Brexit and social justice pandering. This complete twit bragged about Twitter views like that means he should be the Prime Minister. Let's watch this sneaky Ramonian fuck pick again. Where do you get your votes from now in the second round? To whom do you appeal to get a lot more than you, you know, you're through, but you've not got a lot of votes? How do you build on that? You build on that, Andrew, I'm afraid, by just saying this message this message that I'm selling, which is about being radical, about being brave in the center ground by getting out and listening to people, is extraordinarily popular. None of these other candidates at the moment are really tapping into this, but at the moment I think I've got 57 million social media impressions. I can put out a video on something like National Citizen Service, get 1.4 million people watching. What I'm discovering is that a conservative message communicated properly and if you listen in the right way is incredibly popular and that's what I have to get across to colleagues. Do you intend to reopen the negotiations if you were to win? I would look at the political declaration and I was talking to the German ambassador recently I'd be on the plane immediately talking to Chancellor Merkel and others about that but there is absolutely no way at all that Europe is going to allow the withdrawal agreement to be rewritten any time this year so if we want to leave the European Union the way to do it is to get that extra 45 votes in Parliament and drive it through. And the key thing, Andrew, imagine that I did get elected. I would be coming in with a completely different mandate mm -hmm. from Theresa May. I would be coming in, having won an election, openly saying to members of the Conservative Party, I am going to get the withdrawal agreement through. And that would give me a very, very different position in relation to Steve Baker, Andrew Rossendale, John Redwood, who've been saying up till now, that the members do not want to do Brexit in that way. Right. Now, you may have another mandate that would remain to be seen. But from what you say, a vote for Rory Stewart would be a vote for Mrs May's withdrawal agreement. A vote for Rory Stewart is a vote for getting Brexit done as quickly 
as it can be done and unlocking on, the opportunities. On the May agreement. Unlocking the opportunities. On the withdrawal agreement yes. negotiated with Europe. Exactly. The, exactly Which is the same May agreement. The same agreement, Andrew, that the Prime Minister it's negotiated and our civil servants negotiated. That is the agreement. That is it. the only agreement. So these you are, are, con these are, you these are, are continuity May. I'm not continuity May. I don't look anything like the previous Prime Minister. I negotiate in a completely different way. Your agreement looks a lot like her agreement. Because, Andrew, it's the reality. It's the only agreement. There are no other agreements out there. All these other candidates are spinning fairy stories and fantasies. Where right. are their agreements? Where Chris, are their deals? Uh... So, our third nominee is not a person, but an organisation. Now, in this nomination, I have included Joe Brand, as her joke is part of it, but the decision to air it remained with the organisation so they will get the nomination. Obviously, the third contender for Shit Weasel of the Week is none other than the Biased Broadcasting Corporation, otherwise known as the BBC, for disgracefully airing a show which included a joke that was offensive, which is not really the issue in my opinion, is the hypocrisy they showed defending their right to air the joke less than a month after smearing the UKIP MEP candidate Carl Benjamin, also known as Sargon of a Card on YouTube, because he made a joke regarding the Labour MP Jess Phillips. Now this also comes in the same week that the BBC decided to take away three TV licences for the over 75s, even though a 2015 agreement allowing them to raise licence fees in line with inflation had a clause to keep over 75 TV licences free. They did all this a week after praising the World War II veterans during the Donald Trump visit, while they biasly reported on his visit, I would add. Let's watch some highlights that got them nominated. Free television licences will be axed for millions of pensioners from next year. Uh, there's a huge, vicious backlash against this this morning. It's a cost-saving measure for the BBC. We've already heard from many, many people this morning about elderly pensioners who are going to struggle to pay the £154 that licence fee costs. Well, currently, all over 75s receive a free TV licence, but the change will mean only low-income households where one person receives a pension credit benefit will still be eligible. Joining us now, journalist Toby Young, who says he's shocked by the new policy, and frankly, everyone who's emailing in this morning also shocked. But the former BBC journalist Martin Bell defends the cuts. Now, Martin, you currently are in receipt of a free BBC television licence, aren't you? Not only that, I was in the House of Commons the day it was announced by Gordon Brown. I spend a bit of my BBC pension on my BBC licence, mm. and I think I should be made to do that. Having said that, I think the, the means testing should be changed, and there's a terrific case for exempting veterans. But the trouble with that is, well, I'd exempt myself because I was a soldier once, you see. Uh, there, there, there is another side to it. But we are getting an astonishing reaction today, Martin. Mm. I think even BBC people to their bootstraps, like yourself, Susanna, actually, in many ways, and I understand that. It's, you know, I like the BBC. It's a very important and good organisation. But 3.7 million pensioners, including a million veterans, it just seems so unnecessarily unfair, particularly coming the week after the BBC has spent the entire week saluting the D-Day veterans. Now we've just had the daughter of one of them who came on our show yesterday saying, well, what kind of reward is this? No, I, I, I accept that. I think there is a case for, for exempting veterans. I just that in my case, I think I should pay it. Yeah. Right. Say, Joe, we are absolutely united in feeling we are living through a terrible time from a parliamentary point of view. Well, yes, I would say that, but I think that's because certain unpleasant characters are being thrown to the fore, and they're very, very easy to hate. And I'm kind of thinking, why bother with a milkshake when you could get some battery acid? <laughs> <laughs> That's just me, and I, it's all right. I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's purely a fantasy, but I think milkshakes are pathetic. I honestly do. Sorry. Our fourth nominee is, of course, Commissar Korbanov, leader of the Labour Party. This dirty communist thought it was a good idea to table a motion in the House of Commons to block a no-deal Brexit, which luckily failed, causing this crybaby communist fuckpig to call out like a petulant child that the Tories won't be cheering in September, confirming this septic spot on the arse of humanity lacks the maturity to be a leader. The Labour Party is also in a complete shit state, arguing amongst themselves, proving it's the blind leading the blind. Even the scumbag former Labour PM, Tony Blair, 
called him out, showing how much of a shit weasel this guy is with his bad politics and bad history. After the Commissar claimed inequality has been ignored, which is insane. Equality is everything to these left-wing nuts these days. Now let's check out some of Commissar's highlights. The eyes to the right, 298. The nose to the left, 309. You won't be cheering in September. You won't be cheering in September. You won't be cheering in September. Now, the fifth nominee for Shit Weasel of the Week is the warmongering soy boy we spoke about a moment ago, Tony Blair, who thought it was a good idea to release a video bigging up his time in office while completely omitting the fact that he took us into two wars we did not need to enter, costing the lives of British citizens and costing us billions of pounds. The fact that he even has the fucking audacity to talk about his time in office is worthy of a nomination, even if he is calling out the Shit Weasel Commissar Corbynoff. He doesn't have a right to come out in public, in my opinion, given what he's done. I don't often respond to the leader of the Labour Party's attacks on the last Labour government, but enough is enough. Last Saturday, Jeremy Corbyn said, For decades we've been told that inequality doesn't matter because the education system will allow talented and hard-working people to succeed whatever their background. This is the latest repetition of a charge that's become something of a mantra. Only last year, Jeremy said that working class communities have been hit by decades of failed economic policies and that for 30 years, the media and the establishment have tried to tell us that class doesn't matter anymore and that we should ditch any idea of representing and advancing the interests of the working class. Note the decades, the 30 years. In other words, Thatcher government, last Labour government, 10 years of Tory austerity, it's all the same. All one unbroken line, all one policy, all one ideology. This is bad politics and worse history. And it is time to set the record straight. The period 1997 to 2010 saw the most dramatic improvements in our public services with the largest ever peacetime investment in them. With results, between 1997 and 2009, the average wait for hospital inpatient care fell from just over 30 weeks to four weeks. There were over 44,000 new doctors in the NHS, over 80,000 more nurses. Teacher numbers rose by almost 50,000 and support staff by over 200,000. By 2010, 76% of English pupils were achieving five good GCSEs compared with 45% in 1997. And the London Challenge Programme for London Schools, for example, saw the most dramatic improvements in any major capital city anywhere in the world. And other parts of the country and other communities were not forgotten. In 1999, for example, my government agreed a £2 billion investment and settlement for miners suffering from bronchitis and emphysema. By 2005, 350,000 of them have received compensation. And when we look at pensioners and child poverty, we lifted over a million pensioners out of poverty, over a million children out of poverty. We made a radical and dramatic impact on the living standards of millions of the poorest in our communities. A report by the respected Institute for Fiscal Studies showed the distributional impact of the tax and benefit changes under that last Labour government. The poorest 10% of households gained by something like 13% of their incomes, whilst the richest 10% lost by almost 9%. An OECD report on social mobility published last year showed that the UK during this period bucked the trend in social mobility in the world's richest nations and had the largest fall of any nation in immobility and the biggest rise in social mobility. We made the UK more equal, more fair and more socially mobile. And we never ever said inequality didn't matter or that tackling it was not a priority of the government. And by the way, what we did at home, we also did abroad trebling help to the poorest countries, mobilizing the international community in support of action against global poverty, and becoming the first major developed nation 
to hit the 0.7 of GDP aid target. Of course, like any government, we had faults, failures, and did things people disagreed with. But don't tell me, or those who worked with me, or those who were part of the Labour Party at the time, that we did nothing for the poorest in our country or the world. We did, and we're proud of it. Our sixth nomination for Shit Weasel of the Week is the Scottish teacher who kicked a student out of class for saying the inescapable biological fact you can only be male or female. Of course, with these radical left-wing teachers, they think you can be any number of genders you decide because who cares about facts. The teacher even lies about it being a national school policy, which people on Reddit where the clip was originally posted have found to be false. The teacher even admits school policy does not need to be scientific, which is ridiculous. So let's watch this shit weasel in action. You're entitled to your opinion. If I am, then why would you kick me out of class? It's not very inclusive of Can opinion. Can I finish my sentence, please? It's not very inclusive. No, I'm sorry, what you were saying was not very inclusive. And this is an inclusive school. Yeah, what, how is what I was saying? Because I was saying that what's wrong with the website is that there are more than one gender in well, this country. That's by your opinion. That is my opinion, and that is an opinion which is acceptable in the school. I'm afraid yours, which you're saying that there's no such thing as anyone other than male or female, is not inclusive. Scientifically, there are just two genders, depending on what I get, I get gender that. But you're, you're choosing to make an issue of this, because I said, are you really going to do it? That was your opportunity to, 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 to keep quiet. You made the issue with it on the website. You said, oh, this website doesn't have more than two Murray, genders. you were clearly given an opportunity not to pursue it. You chose to do so. Yeah, because I think it's You silly. chose to do so. Yes, that's the key question. You chose to do so. I think it's silly to have anything other than two genders. So. That, okay. Anything could you else please, is Could you please thing. keep that opinion to your own house? Thank you. Not in the so school. you get to put your opinion out in class, and my no, opinion. No, I, I am not. My putting opinion my, has to stay I am inside not my house. putting my opinion. I am not putting my opinion out. I am stating what is national school authority policy. Okay. Well, it's not scientific whatsoever. Not every policy is scientific, Brian. Uh, sorry, not every science. Not every policy is scientific, Murray. And you can't come out here and say that I'm not being inclusive when someone says I didn't you disagree say with. You, so you I said what you were saying you, was not being inclusive. You kicked me out of class. If, if, if you want to have a discussion about it, we could have done it, had a discussion. You don't have to kick me out of class. I'm and sorry. waste 30 minutes I'm, of my time. Or I could have been down revising, doing something else. Instead, I state something I believe in. You kick me out of class for 30 minutes and okay. I'm waiting on the Take this somewhere else, Murray. You can make an official complaint. I'm Please not going to make an official complaint. Why not? I just think it's... So I know what you think and I know what... The authority thinks. I know what the authority's point of view well, is. It's very things. clear, very clear that we make no discrimination on the grounds of various. I wasn't making discrimination. I'm simply saying they're two genders, male and female. Yeah. Anything I'm, else is a personal identification. I'm sorry, but you chose to make an issue of making a point which is contrary to policy. You right? made the issue when you complained about the website, sir. Yes, and I made it in a way. And I responded to that by saying, "But there are only two genders." I never I made the issue. That I am not going here. You can choose, but you're making bad choices. I'm making bad choices, okay. I well, think... can I take my bag and go to the research area and start revising oh, it? You can stay here. Okay, I'll stay here. Thanks for wasting my time. Murray, I am not allowed to tell you how much of my time you have wasted. Okay. Sorry. Our seventh nomination is going to be YouTube itself. They have earned this nomination for the current wave of deplatforming and demonetization that they have been doing in the name of social justice. Because someone's feelings got hurt, they have been removing content creators from the platform. They pandered to the Twitter outrage mobs. There is not much more I really need to say about it, which we will move on to the next nominee. The eighth and final nomination for Shit Weasel of the Week is Oberlin College in Ohio, USA. The slimy shit weasels who work in this radical leftist cesspit accused a local bakery that has been around since 1885 of being racist because they caught three black guys trying to use fake ID to buy a bottle of wine while trying to steal two more. They were arrested when the police showed up and they were still there beating up the shop owner's son. The college staff and students claims it was racially motivated and boycotted the shop, posting flyers calling them a racist. In some cases, paid for by the college itself. The bakery sued the college and this week won $44 million, earning Oberlin College the final nomination for Shit Weasel of the Week. Colleges are watching us and you. 
Calling the actions of Oberlin College in their handling of a student demonstration institutional arrogance, attorneys for a family owned bakery market harmed by those demonstrations asked a Lorain County jury to send a message that will resonate with other institutions around the country. We need to deter and discourage and tell them and this country that there's consequences for the things you say and you do. The Gibson stopped an African-American student from shoplifting at their store and in demonstrations afterwards. Other Oberlin College students labeled the family racist. The same jury already awarded the Gibsons $11 million for their damages. And the school argued that that amount was enough to send a strong message without a punitive award. A punitive damages award at this point will impact people that had nothing to do with this process, nothing to do with these events. But after less than two hours of deliberation, the jury on Thursday decided the college owes the Gibsons an additional punitive damage award of more than $33 million plus attorney's fees. The jury, I just am so thankful for them sending the message uh, that, uh, uh, that this does have to stop. When they inflict harm on members of the community and don't accept responsibility for that harm, um, every once in a while, you're going to have some brave souls like the Gibson family and this jury who will call them out on it. Gibson's emotional after a two-year battle, also hoping the outcome will help restore their reputation. I think uh, it's a clear vindication of, uh, of and they, they've clearly said that uh, my father, our family, we have no history of racism. We weren't from the past and we aren't now. And I, the jury has made that clear. So there is our eight nominees for this week's title of Shit Weasel of the Week. Number one, we had Sadiq Khan and current Shit Weasel of the Week. Number two, we had Rory the Soy Boy Stewart for trying to use Theresa May's surrender document again. Number three, we had the taxpayer-funded British broadcaster, the BBC. Number four, we had Commissar Korbinov, the leader of the Labour Party. Number five, we had Tony Blair, the warmonger for breathing in public. Number six, we had the Scottish teacher who kicks kids out of class for stating facts around males and females being scientific fact. Number seven, we had YouTube for bowing to leftist outrage mobs. And finally, we had number eight, Oberlin College staff for getting woke and going broke, or at least losing 44 million, which is, I suppose, the same difference. Now, I would like to thank all the viewers who put forward nominations this week. The competition was a tough one, with yet more true shit weasel behaviour from every single one of them. And the others I had to leave out due to time, obviously, else the video would have been epic in length. Now, I was torn between five different winners in the end, with the others close behind, as they were all equally quite terrible. So, in ascending order, fifth place, we have YouTube for its censorship policies in response to outrage mobs. In fourth place, we have Oberlin College for race baiting a local business and failing miserably at it, costing them $44 million, which I hope shuts them down for it. In third place, we have the Scottish teacher who removed the child from class for stating facts that went against his ideology. In second place is Rory the Soy Boy Stewart for wanting to push through Theresa May's EU surrender deal, making us the vassal state of Europe, the slimy fuck pig. He would have won, but unfortunately the winner just trumped everything this week. So, without further ado, the winner of Shit Weasel of the Week this week goes to... The Bias Broadcasting Corporation, for its hypocrisy attacking people for making jokes while defending their editor's decision to air a similarly offensive joke less than a month after Victoria Derbyshire smeared someone for their joke. So, they deserve it this time, I feel, especially when you add in the fact that they take away three TV licenses for pensioners, like people who have paid tax all their life, and for the few last few years of their life, you can't even give them a free TV license, giving me no choice but to award it to the BBC, of course. So, you biased fuck pigs, it is with great pleasure I bestow this title upon you. Congratulations. You are the shit weasel of the week. Wear it with pride, you hypocritical smear merchant. Now, thanks for watching, guys. You can comment your nominations for next week's shit weasel of the week down below. Use the hashtag SWOTW when you vote and include their name and why they deserve to be nominated. Now, don't forget to like and share this video as I doubt YouTube will promote it, so it will help a lot.